Hello, this is Paul Check. Welcome to my blog today. Our subject is Tai Chi for body mind balancing, something I love and do regularly and have for many years now. I can't even remember how many years, probably a good 12 or so. Before we get started, I wanted to share a great little resource for those of you that are interested. This book titled The Harvard Medical School Guide to Tai Chi is a very, very good book by uh, Peter W. Wayne and Mark L. First, F-U-E-R-S-T. And it does a fantastic job of not only taking Tai Chi, which can be complicated, and traditional Tai Chi has a lot of mental work involved in memorizing forms and postures and sequences, etc. So I tend to shy away from the technical types of Tai Chi because I found long time ago that most of my patients are so trapped in their head that anything that puts them into a state where memorization becomes the issue takes them out of the experience of their body and up into the intellect, which is the source of a lot of disease today. So I worked for many years to simplify Tai Chi to get down to the very basic essences of what Tai Chi is all about. And I recently was doing research trying to find resources showing scientific studies on the effects of Tai Chi for balancing the hormonal system and addressing disease issues. And this book's got a very, very nice compilation of research and they have found a very direct parallel with my own experience teaching Tai Chi and have done a beautiful job taking Tai Chi down to the real simple nuts and bolts with very simple progressions. In this book, they show the eight key factors of integration that Tai Chi is really all about. And I wanted to share those with you today and a few comments that I hope would help inspire you to get into your own Tai Chi or work in practice. What you see on the diagram is a board is a diagram that I modified. This is something I built for my HLC2 training program. And up on the board, this comes from the book, but I've modified some of the words to match my teaching agenda and my own experiences, but I'm going to take you through the eight key factors that um, work as integrative functions in Tai Chi and talk about how Tai Chi is not a bit, just a personal practice, it's a way of living. So first we see awareness and focused attention. Awareness and focused attention when, re when it comes to Tai Chi isn't so much about being aware of and focusing your attention as though you were following a teacher or studying a book that had complicated information in it. Awareness and focused attention when you're talking about Tai Chi means to be aware of what's happening inside of yourself. Personally, I would take the term focused attention and I would prefer to put in the word feeling. Focused attention is a big part of any of the martial arts, soft martial arts or combative martial arts for many reasons. But really, if you go past just being aware of what you're doing and having focused attention on your breathing and relaxing into the timing of breathing and movement and start thinking about, is my hand in the right place and things like that, we override our feeling capacity with our intellectual mind. Tai Chi really gives the most benefit when you just relax in yourself, have awareness of what's happening inside of you. Most people are so externally oriented, they're unaware of when they need to poop, pee, eat, exercise, or even breathe. So being fully present in yourself is where you want your attention focused on and you want your awareness on things like your breathing, how your body's moving, or maybe where your body's sore when you move, so you can become fully present with that and connect to that and feel what's going on there and let your body guide you. Next, intention, belief, and love. It's very, very important to know what your intention is. If your intention is to rest and to recover, if your intention is to have a moving meditative practice, if your intention is to heal from mental, emotional, or physical distress or disease. That's very, very important because your intention is what basically channels energy into you. If God or spirit comes from zero, then as soon as we think we put potential, zero, unconditional love, into tension, which is what the Tai Chi symbol means, 
a field of complementary opposites. So whenever you put your intention on something, you actually spiritualize it. So when you're going to do Tai Chi, Tai Chi, because it is your intention to fulfill your dream and your belief is that you're capable of it and that you're working to do your part to create that, then you're acting out of your own love, which means that whatever angst you have about getting out of bed or complaining that it's cold outside or whatever, that all becomes a labor of love as opposed to doing something for somebody else or something you think you have to do. Next, we see that Tai Chi is an embodied spiritual philosophy. Most people think of Tai Chi just as people doing exercises together. But as those of you that have watched my blog for any length of time know, Tai Chi really is the foundation of how the entire universe works. Tai Chi really is a physiology, a philosophy, and a mythology all combined into one that makes for a very, very beautiful spiritual practice that is built largely on being aware of yourself and what you're creating within yourself. And by being involved in the spiritual philosophy of Tai Chi, you're automatically involved in the growth of the world and the outgrowth or the uh, creative process of the universe itself, which I think is really beautiful. For social integration, Tai Chi is generally done in groups. It can be done alone, as I'm sure you're aware, but it also is done in groups. And many people enjoy group energy. And when you're in a group energy, you get social interaction. And the thing I like about social interaction with people doing Tai Chi is that like attracts like. People are there to grow and to heal and to become something more beautiful. So Tai Chi as social integration means you get to socially integrate with people of like mind and like kind, and that's always fun. Five, it's a form of mind-body relaxation. Unlike a seated meditation practice, Tai Chi is a dynamic moving practice. When you're seated, you don't get a lot of pumping. With Tai Chi, you do get a lot of pumping. In the book that I started with, there's a nice comment from a Tai Chi master who, in speaking of the difference between seated meditation and Tai Chi, he says, no matter how long you do seated meditation, if somebody comes after you, you can't run, <laughs> or something like that, which just means Tai Chi develops you far beyond just the cerebral or the uh, you know nervous system and and shall we say meditate alone, but your whole body learns from it. So you actually learn athletic ability. So it's very, very good. So it is a very good form of mind-body relaxation. I personally find moving meditations much more appealing to me than seated meditations. Next, Tai Chi is a source of exercise, flexibility, helps develop balance, strength, and aerobic capacity. Now Tai Chi can be done at different levels of intensity, different levels of complexity, and there's different people uh, at different stages of their own health and well-being participating in Tai Chi at all times. So for some, it's going to be an exercise that induces flexibility and balance and maybe gives them aerobic development. For someone like me, it's not going to make me much stronger because I do things that are much more physically challenging than that. So for me, it's more of a relaxation mode. But if you're a person who has you know, a sedentary lifestyle, then doing regular Tai Chi could be a very viable form of strengthening for you. It could be very important to help protect you from unnecessary or unwanted injury. Seven is structural integrity. Tai Chi teachers always look at the alignment issue, keeping your posture aligned, keeping your joint structures balanced, and Tai Chi is also a form of movement awareness. It's also a defensive martial art. So remember that when your body is well balanced and your posture is good, you learn to move from a center. When you're in the balanced position of ideal posture, then you can move in any direction with equal ease. But if your posture is poor and you need to go backwards, you're already committed to a forward movement. So it means that you're not going to be nearly as efficient and your reaction times are going to be slower. So for elderly people who have a high rate of falling and hip fractures and death by hip fractures, um, learning Tai Chi is very, very good because not only do they learn static alignment or good posture, but they learn to hold good posture while doing movements that are 
very, very commonly um, used in things that we do in life. Now on that, I remember when I did my training with Fong Ha, uh, Master Fong Ha, who you can investigate at Fong, F-O-N-G-H-A dot com, who's a phenomenal Tai Chi master who I really love and respect. Um, he told me uh, when I met with him that in his Tai Chi classes, he often gets people that cannot stand in the Zen Zong Tai Chi posture for more than a minute without being completely exhausted. So you can imagine that there's people that cannot hold themselves up against gravity for even a minute coming to Tai Chi classes. So by learning the postures and learning the breathing and movement uh, exercises, you can really, really significantly enhance your structural integrity, your postural strength, and that enhances the dynamics of the energy flow through your body. Chakras work better, meridians work better, everything uh, flows, so you get less of a, uh, a gap between the body and the mind. Most people are walking around, my knee this, my back that, my gut's this, so there's always an, a my, which means my body, like my car or my uh, cake mixer isn't working. But once we get integrated, this experience of I and body become one experience. There's no more sense of limitation in a body. It's a sense of one flowing experience, which is really what I like. So we then end up at breath. Now breath really could easily be number one. The sequence here isn't important. It's just the key components of the eight components of integration that Tai Chi offers. But the breath is really the basis of all soft martial arts. The most important key I can give you is that Remember, the first two-thirds of the breath should always come from the belly, the last one-third from the chest. So if you just practice by putting your finger in your belly button and expanding your belly as you breathe, as far as you can without struggling before the chest rises, and then just let it go out naturally. And always do your best to keep your tongue on the roof of the mouth behind your front teeth, which closes what's called the microcosmic orbit, which is the chief meridian system that all the other organs get their meridians from and breathing in through your nose which stimulates the parasympathetic system cleans and moistens the air so it doesn't draw your lungs out and is a better by far way to breathe with your mouth open you activate the sympathetic or flight, fight or flight system so breathing through the belly two-thirds one-third relaxed out breathing through mouth or nose Breathing in through the nose and keeping your posture aligned. That practice helps oxygenate your body, helps control pH levels in your body, excites your brain so you're more alert and more aware, and energizes your body and stimulates energy, stimulates energy production throughout your body. So those are eight very, very important integrative functions of Tai Chi, both as a practice and a living philosophy. So my tips for you today are one, remember to breathe through your nose and fill your belly. While I'm thinking about it, Tai Chi should ideally be done in loose fitting clothing, all natural fiber, and anytime you can get your bare feet on the ground, preferably the earth or the grass or something natural or stone, you're going to get a much better connection to the earth. Best times to do Tai Chi are the first hour of sunlight and the last hour of sunlight when there's dew formation because the Chi energy is very strong, so you get a stronger connection to yourself, your breath, and the elements at that time. Two, focus on feelings, not thoughts. Witness and breathe into restrictions. So if you have pain somewhere, don't get into a dialogue, oh, that damn back again, geez, I wish that thing would go away. Just, if your mind's going to express itself, let it express what I'm feeling. I'm feeling discomfort in my right SI joint. As I leave that foot a little bit, my discomfort alleviates. As I feel that discomfort, it moves emotion through me. Whatever the emotion is, if it's natural to you to name it, just name it. But don't go into the practice of woulda, shoulda, coulda, didn't. Just simply explain what you're feeling. And to the degree you feel discomfort in your, in your body, then use breathing, exhaling, inhaling. Use breathing, movement, weight shifting, and inner awareness. You might find that if you just turn your foot over a little bit as you come onto it, the pain goes completely away. 
But if you let your foot drop into pronation or turn down, it comes back. So now as you breathe in, you not only shift your weight, but you just supinate your foot a little bit, and your body's guiding you. It's teaching you little things about how your body works and what it needs, and that pumps and mobilizes the joints. If you need to lay on the ground because you've got a kink somewhere and just move your body, just stick with the principles of Tai Chi breathing and movement. Let your body unwind itself. It doesn't have to be intellectual. Again, feel your body, let it talk to you. Remember number three, the dream ABCs make for a great Tai Chi practice. ABCs of dream creation are always expressed backwards. C, you must have clarity on your dream. B, you must believe in your dream. And A, you must take action. So if your dream is to be a healthy whole person or to be a fit mother that can play with their kids or whatever it might be, then always make sure that you go into your Tai Chi session with clarity of your dream, belief in your dream, and know that your practice is taking action. And as Walter Russell says, the universe moves toward you at the same pace you move towards it in the creation of any dream. So it's a one-to-one -one deal. To the degree you put in, the universe puts in. The Quakers have a little prayer they say, saying they say, pray and move your feet, which means don't wait around for God to come fix everything for you because that's just a childish, childish misunderstanding of what the word God means. So always have clarity, belief, and intention with your Tai Chi practice. And then four, embody your spiritual practice in everything that you do, in the foods you buy, in how much exercise you do or don't do, in getting to bed on time. Somebody who actually understands the Tai Chi symbol understands that life is lived best when there's not an excess of any one thing or a deficiency of any one thing. So eat till you're not hungry, not till you're gorged. Drink till you're not thirsty, not till you're in pain. If you're gonna enjoy recreational drugs, do it to the point that you can enjoy it and reward yourself, but don't do it to the point that it becomes an addiction or a distraction to living your own values and creating your own dreams, or you're running from yourself and you're burying your problems and they just grow like mold in an apple barrel only to come bite you in the ass later on. So embody your spiritual practice. That's what I teach. That's what I do for myself each day. If you want to learn more about my holistic lifestyle coaching program or check practitioner programs, feel free to go to chekinstitute.com. There's a lot of great Tai Chi style exercises called work in exercises in my book, How to Eat, Move and Be Healthy. And I show you which ones to use for specific health challenges. Thanks for joining me today. I look forward to sharing with you again soon. To Tai Chi.